And he used the mouth of a person to tell you that. Yes. Nobody's going to love you. You're not good enough. And then God, through his infinite wisdom, put you in a position and a place to remind you that you are enough. Thanks for watching Just Reasoning with Joy. Tonight, Ms. Yukia Johnson is with me again. Thanks Thank for you. coming back. Thank you. And God bless you. She's an anointed woman of God. Thank and you. she has so much that she's going to share with us tonight. Oh, well, thank you so much, Ms. Joy. You're and once welcome. again, thank you for allowing me to be here on your show tonight. Hi, my name is Yukia Johnson, and I am from Miami, Florida. And as Ms. Joy said, I do enjoy the word, and I do love um, just God and his people. So I'm excited about what we're going to share. We host, um, me and my big brother JB, we host a weekly blog talk radio show called H23 Living Everyday Life. And this week we got into the topic, You Have Enough. It will be amazing to know that so many people are bombarded with the idea that you are not enough. It is not just an individual problem, it is a societal problem. I want to share some startling facts. I mean, Americans spent $11 billion in 2008 on self-help and self-improvement CDs, workshops, and all type of seminars and, and life coaching and everything else. Mm -hmm. 11 billion dollars because wow. they needed personal cheerleaders and how-to books right mm -hmm. on how to feel like they were enough mm -hmm. do you know that the american society of plastic surgeons said that there were 14.6 million cosmetic plastic surgery procedures performed in 2012 14.6 are you kidding me right mm -hmm. That, that means that this is not the amount of money that was spent. These are the amount of procedures people. that were done. Because people didn't think that their face, um, faces were beautiful enough. Their bodies weren't beautiful enough. They didn't have enough fat in some places, too much fat in other places, right? Mm -hmm. The enemy bombards us through media and images about that we're consistently not enough. And then we take those ideas, we take those um, things, and we began to pattern our lives after these false images. Right. I remember you and I were discussing, we're talking about models, remember? Right. Yes. 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 And um, nowadays we have young girls who are trying to look like these models and it's false. Right. Because even the models don't even look the way, you know, you see them in a the magazine. We were looking at a picture of Tyra Banks one day mm -hmm. and her real picture, well, she tells everybody that that is not her anyway. Right, right, so right. That's right. a good example. Yes, perfect example. Mm -hmm. They're they're airbrushed. They're photoshopped. You know, on the show, my big brother just um, explained about uh, how to be a bikini model. Explained how this young lady who was already beautiful, they ended up photoshopping and chiseling in muscles and darkening her hair and doing all these things to make her widening her teeth. Okay, wow. with with these uh, programs in order to make her seem more beautiful. And here this image who's not even the girl who's taking the picture is going to be plastered on every advertisement it's going to be plastered on um, posters and all these other things to try to appeal right to right. your senses that this is what you should look like right. in this bathing suit. she doesn't even look she like doesn't that. even look like that <laughs> right. right exactly mm -hmm. and so half of the ideas that we come from I'll, you know some other startling facts that I wanted to share just so you understand what we mean about you constantly being bombarded with you're not enough the NFL, okay, and the NBA, all the professional athletes, they, the statistics say that five years after retirement in the NBA, they file for bankruptcy. My God. The average span, career span um, of income earnings for NBA players, $26 million. At mm. least make, by far, I don't care how much you make, I don't care if you're a bench warmer who only make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. By far, professional athletes make more in a career than the average American makes in a lifetime. My God. And five years after their retirement, 60% of them will file for bankruptcy. In the NFL, it is 76%. That means three-fourths of the NFL will file for bankruptcy five years after they finished their career and made more money 
than the average person will make in their lifetime. Why? Because they're duped into these ideas of buying multiple houses, right? These mm -hmm. club appearance, mm -hmm. appearances and this celebrity lifestyle right. just so they can feel that they are enough. Exactly. Not that you run this fast speed. Not that you've been accepted to um, to play professionally what you love to do, what most people do for a hobby. You get to get paid for it. Exactly. That's not enough. You have to spend all your wealth and resources trying to satisfy this insatiable desire to be what accepted, to be loved, to say that you are enough. Wow. Let's think about the housewife show, right? Mm -hmm. How many women pattern their um, their looks and their beauty after what some housewife show or some reality show, mm -hmm. the kind of hair they have, the color they had, the heels they had on, the purse they carried. You know, you have women around here now, right, trying to get a $3,000 purse but don't have $3,000 in their bank account, my right? God, because God. to carry yes. that bag falsely provides this image that I am enough. I have arrived to a place where I matter. Mm. And in actuality, all you did was give this false perception or image about who you really are. And so tonight, I really want to dig into the idea that you are enough. You have enough. Too often, we are bombarded with these ideas, these fake ideas, these images, these these preponderous uh, uh, fantasy-like ideas about what it is to be successful, to be pretty, to be loved, what what happy marriages should be, what what relationships should be like. And we get duped into exchanging the truth of God for a lie, mm -hmm. right? right? Like yes. the Bible said. Exactly. And yes. then we end up living subpar lives different from how the Creator makes us. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite scriptures that I love to read is out of Psalms, so I want us to read it together. It's Psalms 139. Starting at verse 13, he says, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Verse 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are the works, are thy works, and my soul knoweth right well. Um, the translation says, and my soul knows it well. Verse 15, my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thy eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, in all in thy book all my members were written, which in continu continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. And basically what he was saying, I was fearfully and wonderfully made. When it says that the, um, that I was covered in my mother's womb, it, that actual translation says I was knitted mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. um, and when you knit something, first of all, you have to sit down and have an idea in your head about what you want. Yes. Do I want a hat? Do I want shoes? Right. Do I want a blanket? Right. Right? right? So first I have to know what I want. Right. Then I get the materials that are necessary right to materials. build that thing. Right? Yes. If I want a teddy bear on it, a blue square, a brown square, if I want to mix together colors, whatever it is, right. I have to sit down and think about it. So before God knit you together, he had to sit down and think about you, what your purpose was, and then he had to gather all those materials together just so you can have that. So what does that mean? Wherever you are, that's where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. meaning you shouldn't aspire for higher, but that means that if you were born in the hood, guess what? Something in the hood was necessary for your future development. Mm -hmm. If you were born in the palace, guess what? Something in the palace was necessary for your development. I think I like to think of it That's like good. this, right? Yes. Seeds are purposely placed. Or, or, or things are purposely placed in the right environment so that they can grow. Right. You don't take seeds and put them in water and mm -hmm. expect them to grow. Mm -hmm. A seed has to be placed in soil, in soil right? right? Mm -hmm. You don't take a fish or a minnow or, 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 the, or egg, fish eggs and put them in the sand and expect them to grow. Die. You have to put them in water yes. so that they can flourish. And the right kind of water, right? Because you can't take fresh water and put exactly. them in salt water, right? Exactly. And the right kind of environment so that that thing could grow. And the awesome part about that strategic design is that not only does it need it to grow, but that environment needs that thing, right? right? Exactly. If certain fish don't grow in the ocean, then larger fish can't eat. Mm 
And if larger fish can't eat, then the whole ecosystem is thrown off. And so you are a part of that thing that says wherever you are, not only do you need your environment, your environment needs you. Exactly. Right? right. Because if you're not there to encourage, to strengthen, to empower, right? If you're not there to develop business ideas and new ways of thinking, if you're not there to use what God has put inside of you, you throw a whole ecosystem, a whole environment off. Off balance. Off balance. Mm -hmm. You have enough. You know, you and I were talking and we were talking about, I heard that you all did an earlier show about the fathers, mm -hmm. right? Yes. How so many people have fell under the demise and the beguile of the enemy about not having fathers present. Now, please do not misinterpret what I'm saying. Fathers are important. There's a reason why God gave them and put them on the earth. There's a reason why we can't do this by ourselves because that was not God's original intent. Mm -hmm. First, he made man. Had engulfed in him was both male and female, he said, and he made them, right? And mm -hmm. then he, when he realized that there is nothing on earth compatible enough for a man, he extracted out of him a helpmate suitable, his equal, and thus we were called one man. Mm -hmm. It was a partnership and a joint co-op <laughs> mm -hmm. in getting this earth together. But here's something that I think we miss in that same Garden of Eden story. The Bible says that after they ate the fruit, right, mm -hmm. God went to look for Adam and he hid himself and he asked Adam, why are you hiding from me? And Adam said, because I was naked. And God's response to him was, who told you you were naked? Right. Mm -hmm. Prior to eating from that forbidden fruit. Adam was satisfied because he had enough. Exactly. He had enough to eat. Right. He had enough to sleep. Right. He had his helpmate suitable. Right. Everything in his environment was fit for him. It was never God's desire for him to know death and to know darkness because he was at a place of peace and serenity, right? right? And so as soon as he ate from that fruit, he opened up his mind to ideas that he never was supposed to worry about. Thus, the internal fight. For this insatiable desire to be manifested. Mm -hmm. Do you know <laughs> that they have this thing in dieting? Yes, we're all on the diet at some point, right? They have this mm -hmm. thing in dieting what they call it um, hunger-induced thirst. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? I'm sorry, thirst-induced hunger. I apologize. It's called thirst-induced hunger, which basically means your body is really thirsty, but the way you satisfy it is by eating. So you, you think you're hungry, but in actuality, you're, you're thirsty. thirsty. And so instead of drinking water, mm -hmm. right, getting electrolytes and things like that in your body to, to balance it, right. you instead eat, which continues to deplenish your body of more liquids because you need those liquids, consume right. them to break down these foods, right? right. Yes. Now, doesn't that sound like human life? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have heart-induced problems, <laughs> right, mm -hmm. that is right. Ca causing us to go out there and overeat, overdrink, oversmoke, oversex, right, overbuy. How many houses went into foreclosure because people bought more houses than they should afford? An entire economic system was turned upside down because that wasn't enough. Getting in a three-bedroom house wasn't enough. It had to be the six-bedroom house, right? Getting in a four-bedroom house wasn't enough. It had to be a mansion, right? It Getting a, a Camry or a car or a car that I can afford, that wasn't enough. It had to be a luxury vehicle and repossessions and bankruptcies and all of these things became the result of our desire to prove to try to prove externally exactly. right yes. what was really an internally induced problem mm -hmm. my heart and my soul felt like I wasn't enough so now what I want people to understand tonight through this idea is that you are enough who told you you wasn't smart enough? Who told you you weren't pretty enough? Who told you that this imaginable standard is what beauty is? Who told you your skin isn't beautiful enough? Your hair isn't great enough? You know, in, in the African-American culture, you know how we go. We got this natural versus perm, right? right? Natural versus straight. You're not a real woman until you go natural. You got, you got women, right? who already went through self-esteem issues, thus they decided to go away with all the cosmetics and embrace their natural selves. And now they're judging women, right? right. Who might say, I like my straight hair, right? Yeah. I like my hair straight. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Guess what? 
If you are really happy with where you are, whatever another person needs to do to be satisfied, you should be at peace with that. Exactly. To fight each other saying my way is the only beautiful way goes back to what the problem was in the beginning. You don't feel like you were enough. And so until somebody else joins your league of mm -hmm. natural hair or perm <laughs> hair or weave, right? Until right. somebody joins your league, you're not satisfied. Because you truly don't feel confident enough to go out just as you are. Mm -hmm. Listen, you are enough. Who told you that you are not a good mother? Who told you that you can't be a good father? Who told you that you can't be a faithful husband? Who told you that you cannot be the wife your family needs? These are all lies from the enemy. Who told you you can't be a good parent? Who says you can't get your boy what he needs? You know, oftentimes we think that being enough means we have to be everything for people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so we don't realize that part of this ecosystem of sisters and brothers and iron, sharpening iron, right? And us leaning on each other for strength is the idea that, listen, what you have... I might need and what I have you might need right so if I'm strong in math mm -hmm. and you're strong in in English we can exchange resources and we both will have what we need exactly. if I'm good at sports activities and you're good at reading then you bring your kid to my house for playtime and I'll put my kid over your house for reading time right, right? right. you do not have to do it all by yes. yourself this notion that I, I, I am a loner, nobody cares about me, this, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Mm -hmm. If you would open your mouth and your heart, you'd be willing to receive more things and God will bring them to you. The Bible promises, it says that he who lacks wisdom, ask for it mm -hmm. and God will give it to you freely. And I love that the Bible continues on and says he will do it without judgment. Which means he's not going to judge you because you say, God, I, I don't understand how to do this. I need help, right? God, I, I feel like I'm in, inadequate in this area. Can you give me some more tools? God, I want to learn how to be better at this thing. Can you show me? Lord, I need more resources. I need more time. I need more help. Can you send somebody who cares about me to help me, right? right? right. Without judgment, God will give you what you need. But you got to open up your mouth and ask. And not from that broken place, the insecure, God, if you just get me a house. No, Lord, I want to be a faithful steward over the apartment. Exactly. Yes. I want to feel safe. Yes. The reality is, Lord, unless you're going to change this neighborhood so that I feel safer, the reality is I just want to live somewhere safe. You know how many people live in big old houses by themselves, can't keep it clean, can't keep the grass cut, can't keep the lights on, can't keep... Why? Because you wanted this stuff to assume... That you have made it to a certain place that you don't have to prove. And it's a, it's all a lie. It's all and it's yeah. all a waste. Yes. Hearing a family could be um inhabiting this house that really needs the five bedrooms. Right. And now you're in here battling the spirit of depression and loneliness right. in this five bedroom house and think, Don't nobody love me. Well, if you were probably in the one bedroom, because mm -hmm. <laughs> this is just you, mm -hmm. and you started giving more of your energy and time to others, you'd find out how many people do love you. That's true. That is so true. And stressed out, stressed out because they can't even pay these prices. Right, they I can't, can't pay for it. this bill. I can't keep this stuff up. Listen, you have enough. You, I don't care if your mother wasn't there, your father wasn't there, if you were abused, if you were whatever you are. I just said it. Whatever circumstance or situation you were in, it was the right environment for the gift and the seed and the purpose down on side of, inside of you. Listen, certain plants can't grow in certain climates. Right, I can't take a cactus and put it in, in, in up in Canada. Mm -hmm. It's going to die. Mm -hmm. And then I can't take um, a, a, a seal, right, and put him down near the African <laughs> subway in desert. Mm -hmm. Things have to be in the environment to grow. Right. God knows what's inside of you, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. He knows what's inside of you, young man, and he knows what you need to be cultivated. So before you go beating yourself up again. 
abandoning your gifts and your purpose to try to go out there and satisfy yourself and change who you are to be somebody else. Why don't you go back to the manufacturer, the creator, the one who fearfully, that word fearfully means he strategically, he purposely, he intentionally made you a certain way, mm -hmm. right? right? Go back to the creator and say, God, what did you intend when you made me? Right. Show me what was, why am I so feisty? How come I can recognize numbers? Why can I remember things so clearly? What, why can I put things, why can I cook so well? Mm -hmm. Do you know half of your destiny is connected to the idea that because you are so gifted at something, that's a sure tale sign that that's what you were called to do. A sure tale sign. Some of the greatest chefs started off in places where they had limited resources and had to be creative enough to make things work. Right? right? Some of the best teachers grew up in, in large families, right? Mm -hmm. And they always had to explain to their little siblings how to get stuff done. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yes. Some of the best counselors were in abusive situations and in situations where their parents had mental illnesses and diseases. And so they understand both sides of the fence now. Some of the best people in this world were put in adverse circumstances. Mm -hmm. And the gift on the inside of them had to be cultivated and brought up so that that they can be better at what they're called to do right so we don't want to forget the idea that you are enough amen you exactly. are enough yes the substance on the inside of you is enough enough to do what if you need to go get more go get more right mm -hmm. we said the idea of let's just say you had a kid right who was in a trigonometry course and you know every parent is not equipped to help their child with trigonometry right mm -hmm. You might can't do the trigonometry problem, but guess what you can do? You're a talker. You, you, you know how to get and negotiate and get what you want. How about you negotiate with a college student who is good at trigonometry to help your child? And an exchange can happen. Listen, I make a mean stew. <laughs> I make sure you have stew every Wednesday if you come mm -hmm. to, to my child every Saturday. Right? Mm. You are enough. Exactly. You That's might can't right. work out the trigonometry problem, but you can make stew and cornbread. Exactly. Make your stew and cornbread. Go find you somebody who can and make an exchange. We have to be willing to understand that what I have is enough. And it is enough to exchange in the marketplace for what I don't have. But if you stay stuck... On the, oh, I didn't have this. Oh, my life wasn't perfect. Oh, I want to guess what happened. You fall right into the enemy's trap. Now, you're more focused on what wasn't there than what was there. We talk about the idea of the father's not being there. And I'm a witness of this. If I, was, if I remained focused on the fact that my father was not there and his issues that he had going on, guess what I, what I would have subconsciously did? I would have negated all the wonderful people that were there like my mother, my grandmother, my grandfather, my eldest brother, my um, mentors in school and, and in high school and in ministry. All these community of people who devoted their lives, their energy and their substance to making me somebody. Wow. All of a sudden I discredit that. Because one person wasn't there. Guess what? Even though I loved him and I wanted him to be a part of my life, I still had enough to have a fulfilling right. and a successful life. Exactly. I still graduated. No early teenage pregnancy. I graduated from college early. Went on scholarships. Mm -hmm. Had ended up getting married, had children, yes. they were end up being successful. All the negative statistics that people told me were going to happen from not having my father there, mm -hmm. guess what? The enemy did not win because I had enough. Amen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I believe that. I never knew my life was... Until I got into psychology and sociology and started learning about all these statistics, mm -hmm. I almost felt, you know, that's when you feel super blessed because you was like, oh, I was supposed to get pregnant in high school. I was supposed to have low self-esteem. I should have I should have been a stripper or something, you know, or oh, drugs. Drugs. I should have gotten on drugs. Yeah. I, I missed my mark. How did yeah. I come out? Like, because mm -hmm. no one ever told me that I had a problem, that my life wasn't enough. Everybody always told me, whatever you need. God will provide. Yes. Whatever you need yes. will be here. Whatever yes. you need, I will give. Right. And if we could get to that place where we understand that whatever we need, God will provide. Mm -hmm. Whatever we need, God will give. Mm -hmm. You will begin to understand the fullness of the idea. You are enough and you have enough.
Don't let the enemy fool you anymore. Don't let him deceive and manipulate you out of your inheritance, your birthright, your purpose, your destiny, your future. He's trying to steal days from us. Yep. Do you know that every day you spend in depression and oppression is the day you miss an opportunity to do what you're supposed to do in the world? Mm -hmm. I have a young lady I knew. She went through um, some experiences, you know, negative experiences through a bad divorce, unfortunately. And she wanted to kill herself and oh, so on wow. and so forth. And now, look, she turned around. This young lady is doing movie premieres. She's written books now. Wow. She's been traveling all over the world, um, places she had never been before in her, in her previous life with her ex-husband. And I remember telling her, these were the days the enemy were trying, was it's, trying to steal from yeah, you. Yeah. This is the moment that the enemy never wanted you to see. He wanted you to believe that you your life was wrapped up in the thing that is no longer here. Mm, he glory. wanted you to believe that the best days of your life was behind you and there was nothing else in front of you no and vision. that you are not enough to do anything by yourself. He wanted you to believe that you were not enough, right, to raise right. kids and you were not enough to live right. in this house. And he and he used the mouth of a person to tell you that yes. nobody's going to love you. Uh -huh. You're not good enough. And then God, through his infinite wisdom, put you in a position and a place to remind you that you are enough. Listen, before we leave, I definitely want to pray. And I would like to share my contact information with you yes, all. Yes. We have a weekly Blog Talk Radio show called www.blogtalkradio.com slash H23 Living Everyday Life. It's www.blogtalkradio.com blogtalkradio.com slash h23 living everyday life we're there every monday and you can also email us every monday at 9 uh, p.m eastern and you can email us at h23 email at gmail.com i really mm -hmm. want us to pray for everyone okay. tonight before we leave Father in heaven, first of all, we want to repent and ask you to forgive us for not understanding and believing that we were fearfully and wonderfully um, made. That th our substance was hidden, but not from you. You know everything in us. You know everything about us. Lord, we know that some of us have murmured and complained, Lord God, about what we didn't have and what we we felt like we deserved or should have, um, should have had in our lives, Lord God. And we ask for forgiveness because today we at the revelation that we have enough and we were placed in the right environment for what was on the inside of us. So now, God, in the name of Jesus, we're going to trust you in a different place. And we're going to believe your report. You fearfully and wonderfully made us marvelous are the works of your hand and we are going to know it every day that we wake up and we will no longer look to the things we don't have but we will continue to look to you christ jesus in jesus name in we pray jesus name amen 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 glory be to god I know that I was going to get a stomach full tonight. <laughs> that was so good. That was good food. Good, good. Thank amen, you so amen. much. Well, I look forward to coming back again. It's yes, with you, and yes. thank you so much. Yes, you will be coming back again because we're still not finished. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. God bless you, and thanks for stopping by and watching Just Reasoning with Joy. Good night.